Hey guys, Ranchin here, bring all yet another game of League of Legends. This time, not Korean, but North American Challenger Solo Q commentary because, you know, we all love the Americans. We all love the Yanks and their wild style goodness. Let's go over the teams real quick, shall we? Blue team, HTC Mike playing Ari Wilson being played by DG's. XDG Smitty, Double Ift, you all know Double Ift being played by the Vayne. I at Orange playing Hecarim, Longcat 4 playing the Nami. Seems like, actually, wondering if there's gonna be a little bit of action here. Wow, Wilson coming in really close. Actually, granting Janna some gold, or actually smiting the Spiderling, but granting Janna a bit of gold just by being harassed. So Janna's gonna say, thank you. She's gonna get charmed, but I don't think that they can turn that and make anything out of it. They cannot, no sir. So that's a no. Let's look at the other side. Lucian being played by Hi um, I'm Gosu, actually a fairly popular streamer and AD carry, AD carry player, very well known for his vein. Big Ol' Ron playing the Rissandra top, Ice playing the Janna, Wahula Hula playing the Elise, and Chipotle Hunter playing the LeBlanc. And it seems like Red Team is actually gonna take advantage of the whole I can take Gromp early and get level two on one of my dudes thing. And we actually see a lot of that being done these days just because, well, it's a little bit overpowered. Being able to go into lane and maybe miss one at most two creeps, get a bunch of gold from killing this guy, as well as actually having an advantage by him level 2. It seems like Nami actually sees that this is happening. Hey, I want to go and make sure it doesn't. She's going to ward it. And that's actually going to be enough, it seems, to actually force him off. They don't want to, they want to be able to do this completely uninterrupted. Nami's actually going to take a significant amount of harass for that, though. So she's going to say thanks to that. Seems like Hecarim, meanwhile, as Lissandra was helping Elise, Hecarim would actually harass Lissandra a little bit. It's going to be an interesting lane to see. Hecarim in all his rainbow-colored glory against Lissandra. Motling Monsieur already Nami. There you go, using her ebb and flow to heal up a little bit as she was already getting fairly low, despite not really much happening. <clears throat> now the Janna as well as Lucian actually harassing the vein quite heavily. I'm going to being used to get her top her back to at least half. And both Lucian and Vayne at about half health to support. Actually, John is doing a pretty good job of harassing with their auto attacks, being fairly aggressive here. Seems like the uh, Lucian and the John combination are going to want to play a little bit aggressive to just try to force this Vayne out of lane. Um, yeah, double lift. This is going to be interesting. I know that Haim Ghost is actually a very good player, so is double lift. I think most of these guys are extremely powerful players. And double lift, by many, considered to be the best AD carry, if not in the world, then definitely in North America. Seems like we actually had a steal here by Lee Sin in the enemy jungle did and did indeed get himself an enemy blue buff. So thanks for that. Also actually gonna kill the Rift Scuttler to grant his team a little bit of extra vision. Always thankful for that. Seems like Ari's having a little bit of trouble against this LeBlanc. A lot of last hits behind, actually. That's not too great. I mean the little top lane, we see that Hecarim is actually a few levels behind as well. Seems like he's not playing, he's playing fairly passively, understandably, because Lissandra has the range advantage on him, so he has to be very careful, he has to allow it to push to his side before he actually go gets last hit. Gets last hit, seems like bot lane, we're gonna be seeing a little bit of action here. At least now in his own jungle, he's a little loose. Oof, Lucian actually gonna go in and, oof, getting a nice bit of harass there, both by utilizing his light singer and by, by using the piercing light. Unfortunately, Vayne didn't have Condemn or else she could have maybe stunned him into the wall. And unfortunately, she just did not have the capacity to do that. Ari, meanwhile, didn't actually... Oh, bloody hell. That's why Ari's going back home. She didn't get her blue buff. Somehow, unfortunately, some sort of miscommunication probably there by blue team. Perhaps he accidentally killed what he didn't want to kill, and that's what happened. Well, Vayne gonna get a little bit of trouble. Gonna get... Oof, me and forced to burn heal. They're taking a lot of damage. Me and forced to burn flash as well. Maybe could have died. If Wuxian had actually went in a little bit more aggressively, she could have died there, so he's going to be forced to go back. Hecarim, meanwhile, going to TP back after going home, getting himself a Null Magic Mantle. Oof, look at that. Not a lot of last hits compared to the Lissandra. She's going to be in a little trouble early. And it seems like bot lane. Actually, also going to be in trouble mid lane. Ari actually going to get rooted. No, no more follow-ups here from LeBlanc, but she's already doing a great job of really harassing her opponent and forcing her back. Vayne's finally gonna come back to lane. We're gonna see whether she can actually do something about it here. She's still only level three. Going back to buy a long sword to try to at least help her with some last hits. Ooh, so much damage in the Nami. Are they gonna get a kill? Oh, nice ebb and flow there. Was it? I think it was an ebb and flow. No, it was a heal. Sorry. Double heal bottom. I'm just so used to not seeing that she actually healed to survive that. 
Saving her life. Vayne might actually come in here and get some kills in response as Lee Sin is actually coming in. Oh my god. That was a very bad, very, very bad recall location. No vision in this area. Perfect timing for Lee Sin to just come in as well. And Vayne wasn't even scared. After some pretty good denial and harass on the Vayne, allowing her to get the first blood more than equalizes and makes up for early troubles. And double lifts is the kind of player that can just take, oh, I'm sorry, were you denying me and now you're just gonna let me get back into the game? Thank you, I'll take full advantage of this and crush you. Because that seems like what they're gonna do, because mid lane and top lane so far is being shut down, so this is actually really good play by the least in that, okay, so in this kind of thing, who on my team is most likely to really, really come back? And that's probably Vayne after she gets a bunch of last hits. She can, she is one of the hyper carries in the game. She can carry really hard, especially with a good player like Double Lift. So that's what you want to happen. Mid lane, we're going to see some engagements happening. Oof! Flash coming out there from the LeBlanc to stay alive. But I think that Elise is actually going to die. She got the kill on the Ari, but not going to be able to get a second one. Elise and finishes her off. LeBlanc not in a good position there either. John actually coming in to help. And as we speak, Lissandra gonna get the kill on Hecarim, but gonna die in response as well. Just a little bit close to the tower, probably went just a little bit too aggressive. And probably used her ultimate offensively. And that's sometimes what happens when you do that. John and Lucian in very good position to actually play very aggressively against the Vayne here again. Let's look at items wide. He has a pickaxe. While Vayne actually hasn't been accepted, this is gonna put her in a great position. They're gonna go for the engagement. You can see that Vayne just gets the silver bolts. And the tumble damage is just a little too much burst against her opponent. Plus the Vampiric Scepter and just being able to heal up a little bit just by staying in lane for a little while longer and just auto-attacking these creeps. It is so significant. Uh, that's also one of the the power kind of actually building uh, Blade of the Rune King because you can actually do that. You can take advantage of that early Vampiric Scepter to stay better in lane. But of course not every AD carry has that as the optimal build, a certain AD carries you wouldn't be able to build that, and unfortunately you lose out on some sustain that way. Now it seems like Lee Sin is actually going to want to come top, not sure if Lee Sin does have a hacker, which is going to go for it, bops her away, she's going to be able to get away, she doesn't have her ultimate though, the kick, nice follow up here from Lee Sin, at least nowhere close to help with that. So that's unfortunate, she's actually going to take it up fairly easily, Lucian now solo by himself, ooh, barely going to be able. Relentless persaults himself, oof, almost gets hit too, but nice relentless pursuit, pursuit by him there to actually get out of the way of Navi's tidal wave. Another John is in lane, they're gonna start trading once away, and you can see that though, despite the true damage, Lucian can actually trade quite a little pursuit and gonna try to go for it, gonna get the kill on the vein, nice play, going aggressive, knowing that he had the damage there, and deciding to take full advantage of it. Meanwhile, now we we'll see that Luis is actually gonna grant her a long blue buff. And Ari still doesn't have it, she's gonna be waiting on that. That's a little bit of disadvantage. She has level six though, so I'm wondering to see whether she's gonna go and gank. Are they actually thinking of diamond? They're thinking of doing this shield coming up. We see no ever coming in to support TP also coming in. Nice bubble there from Lucian. He's just gonna die. Jana gets executed, so that's fine, but perfect timing by Lucian. Once again, the DP not even really necessary, I think, but to the Hecarim, but he went in to help support though. And uh, all is well that ends well, as they say. Seems like at this point people are going to be going on Dragon Lee Sin once they kept this Dragon Arya also trying to support. Louise going in full on. Lucy take a little bit of a hit. LeBlanc coming in as well to try to do some damage. She's actually kicked around and actually going to get killed by Louise Sin. And Arya comes in to support to try to cut this up. Is Louise not going to manage to take the response kill? Oof. Lanes early on, gotta say, we're in favor of Purple Team, but as soon as the fighting started happening, Blue Side all of a sudden takes all sorts of advantages. Well, I'm sure Ari would have preferred blue buff. She's gonna say very much thank you to this red buff, nonetheless, because why not? Every little bit helps. Well, let's look at the 80 carries, because I feel they're gonna be kind of important. A couple of long swords and a pickaxe. Okay, then, that might be a blade of the Rune King. We'll <laughs> we see that Vayne has actually decided, you know, I'm gonna go top and kill someone, because, you know, I got nothing to do bottom anymore. I don't feel like it. Might actually be a rotation because Nami's there with him too, so decided, hey, let's just rotate against this Wissandra because she's kicking ass against Hecarim, so there's a nice, interesting response to that TP earlier. She's going to be forced to just push it out. She actually has three kills and more, more or less, than Lucian at this point, so it's going to be rough. I'm wondering, I think the red team is actually going to be able to take this in response. Oof, LeBlanc almost getting the Nami there, forcing him to pop heal, but that's okay. They are going to get the dragon, though. 
But is it going to be enough? I mean, that's going to be a bit of an advantage for next team fight, but they had to take advantage of it. Actually, didn't peek at the items. She does have her Bilge Water Cult. It's not too far away from Blade of the Rune King. Once that happens, Vayne's going to be super strong, so they're going to have to play careful at that point. Lissandra, yeah, Fiendish Codex and and uh, Forbidden Island, not, not too much else yet. I do see the Mortal Anomicon on the LeBlanc. And Ari finally getting her blue buff. Still only Fiendish Codex. Not a lot of items, so definitely behind on the Mortal Anomicon, but the other thing. But she's going to be fine. See, there's going to be another Gendron bot. Nice tidal wave. Going to catch the Janna. She's going to flash in Monsoon. As Vayne's going to be forced to flash away, they're going to get the Janna out of this fight. They're at least going to repel down and try to focus down this Vayne. However, she's a little bit out of position. Nice calling there from... Uh, from uh, Lucian as she's actually has to be able to get this skill actually forced to flash for a little bit surprised by that Didn't have his Lentress pursuit due to cooldown, but he definitely flashes for it to get the kill nice escape there from Vayne to actually get away from that No mana now on the Lucian she has to be a little bit careful. He might actually get himself killed ultimate pop by Vayne going for it straight up Yep, that's gonna be enough nice bit bit of speed boost alongside from Nami and that's what that's just what you get from the top level players. They can tell this position, hey, you know what? I'm actually in a perfect position to go and kill him. I can see that Lucian doesn't have any mana. He's not gonna be able to relance his pursuit. So I'm just gonna go and kill him. As this is also happening, Lee Sin just going around the map and taking top lane. Stalker's Blade and Warrior. Because why not? Hublong thinking of going out and ganking some. She might actually get caught by Ari. Ari, no, 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 it doesn't. Oh, no ultimate, I think she actually used her ultimate there to see away and as we speak we see actually goes top lane and just catches with Sandra and gives her and says hello, goodbye, please die. Oof, nice little dodge of the root there by the Ari. It's gonna be pretty just interesting to see what decides because at this point blue team has gotten this little significant goal advantage just by winning team fights and using their team fights to get get an obje get objectives because they've gotten top lane now. A little bit of trouble at this point. Elise herself with Rangel's Trailblazer and Magus. So she has more of a farming thing going on. I actually understand why people go Rangers. It's probably the best smite upgrade in the game just because it gives a, it lowers the cooldown. And it AoE stuns all damages and stuns all the creeps. That's kind of nuts. It's even good for pushing when you really think about it now. Willy Blanc wants to go for it a little bit. Slow from the Zephyr coming in. Is she going to go for it all the way? Is there going to be a tomb? There is going to be a tomb. Is going to be enough damage to actually take down the Hecarim? Yes, Janna gets the kill. Not exactly the guy you want to get the kill, but you know, you'll take it no matter what way you can. Now, Lucian's going to be in trouble here. Bottom, yep, easy kill there. Once again, Vayne getting an ultimate pop and holding. They both go in and just more than enough damage. And the fact that Vayne gets it... Mm, Quite decent speed boost when she uses her ultimate and runs towards the opponent is actually quite significant there as well. Janna actually doing a little bit of damage. Zephyr, she might actually die for this because this is a little bit risky. Nice bubble there from Nami. That's going to guarantee another kill. Is actually double if going to get yet another one. Hecarim actually TPing. That's going to be a double kill. And that was actually three kills there for him. Necrim goes in. Are they almost feeding the Vayne four kills? It's getting a little bit out of control, Vayne, at this point in the game. Not just played at Rune King, but beautiful play there for Double if to just take in full advantage of the position that he is in to go and get himself den kills. And if there's anyone in this game you want to feed that is not feed, it's Double Lift on his AD carry. Yikes, yikes, yikes. Especially one as strong as this. Ooh, Ari. Is she gonna go flash in? But nice flash response by LeBlanc. She is probably gonna die to the Lee Sin, though. Yes, she is. Dominating at this point, but still a nice game, nice gameplay. Now I'm gonna go out and buy Frost Kim's claim, so she's actually gonna do a butt of that. And Monsoon, oof, Leeson barely misses with a Sonic Wave. Almost getting a kill. They're gonna still continue bubble misses. They might turn around on this with this Nami being forced to flash away with Sandra not in the perfect position. Doesn't have her tomb either. Just gonna force him back. Is there gonna be an engagement here? The three versus three, it seems. Nobody's gonna engage on anyone. Lucian actually gonna go in on Lissandra. Instantly gives her. And now we see that John is out of position and Lucian just gonna follow this up and get a double kill. Does he have the slow on the Elise? She's gonna repel out. Is the Nami gonna catch her? Gets the bubble, forcing the flash. Nice play. As they get even more kills, Lucian meanwhile just gonna go and say goodbye because he's not in a very good position so far in this game. Does have his ghost blade? Actually, went for that early. That's interesting. Don't often see a ghost blade start for AD carries, but you know, 
Now that it's been upgraded and actually possible, we'll get ready here is nice play, but unfortunately misses the root due to Ari using an ultimate. Charm doesn't hit. LeBlanc can't go in again. Ari actually gonna use ultimate to position herself in a way so she's a little bit safer. At this point, I'm not exactly sure what Reddy is gonna do. I mean, they're already almost 10k gold behind just from a few team fights, and they only lost a couple of towers. It's just the t the fights, all damn fights. And not a lot of people in position to really give anyone. Ari also slowly getting herself going once she starts really joining the fights. That's gonna be great. She's already has Athenes. She's gonna be fine. Lissandra is top lane trying to get a little bit of farm going, only has a Moral Namicon. Lucian only a ghost blade. He really I mean, yeah, okay, he's fairly safe now and that he can kind of farm as long as he doesn't miss those farms. I'm ghost to probably thinking, you took my vein, man. If this was me playing vein, that would be me making them plays. Maybe. I don't know. I do believe he's actually a sub for a pro team or two. So that's pretty good. Root barely misses. Look at him, all them wards that not be being forced to try to deward. Actually, one ward stays in place, forcing her to pop down a pink just to de ward. That seems like there's gonna be a lot of people coming in. Lee Sin, whew, always thinking of engaging. It's gonna be a 4v3 there. LeBlanc going in straight up. Not quite enough damage to kill the Ari there, though. But he's definitely gonna want to engage. The red team has to be careful. They have to take advantage of any positioning advantages they can get. Nice kick here from Lee Sin. Nice tidal wave as well. Lucian can be forced to flash away. He's actually gonna be able to survive or not. Hacker, meanwhile, just bulldozes through everybody and gets a bunch of kills and Vayne doesn't even have to be a part of the game to get wins because that was a 5v4 and a death Ari going in a little too deep at the long side at the end side there and actually getting herself killed but they'll take that one for two they might be able to push this in Vayne seems like she's just gonna get the last hit spot and get those towers they might be I don't think they're gonna be able to take this tower especially with Jana there but mid bot lane is probably gonna be able to take it also gonna be a dragon here for blue team Mage is going to pop down a ward and do as much damage as possible before Lucian gets himself down here. Is it going to be enough? It seems like Elise is actually not going to go in to defend. Yeah, Vayne is just going to grab herself a free tower here. No problem. Also a blue uh, dragon for blue team. And at this point, this game is really snowballing out of control. Not exactly sure what to say at this point, guys. This game is just going a little crazy. Vayne has the thing on her. He's just going to go in straight in on the Lucian with her ultimate. He's just going to die. Never mind. Pop in the heel, getting the double kill on the Janna as well. Gonna die to the LeBlanc, but damn. Those plays, guys. Those plays. That was amazing. Man, actually getting a pretty darn good play there. We sit now, gonna go in instantly kills anybody. Like him and LeBlanc, and LeBlanc just dies to him instantly, as well as uh, the Elise. That is nuts. The power of him with Stalker's Blade. Jeez. Edge Nutch. Top lane, meanwhile. Gank's happening. Lissandra dying. I think at this point, it, the red team's kind of started to lose focus. It's actually really unfortunate because if you think about it, they actually started off really well. Bot lane was doing well, mid lane was doing well, top lane was doing well, and it just rapidly got way out of control way fast. No sight stone for the Snami. She's actually going for an Aegis, has an Aegis of the Legion this game. Being forced to buy, spend money on wards instead. TP coming in here from Hecarim. Seems like it's going to be a fight. Tidal Wave doesn't hit anybody, but Hecarim going to ult in. He's going to at least catch the Lucian with a fear. He's just going to die, I think, very soon. Actually, forced to use a Gunblade, but still doesn't get away. And everyone is seeing a bunch of damage. Hecarim getting himself a double kill. And Vayne gonna, just going to chase people up. Does she have her ultimate? Yeah, she didn't actually use it. Now we see she's actually still not going to pop it. She's going to try to get there. We go. Ultimate goes off. If she really goes in at this point. Has an exhaust on her. Tumbles away. Nice condemn there to get the Lissandra. Is she going to get a triple kill? Does she have enough? Going to run in and follow. Unfortunately, nice juke there from the LeBlanc to not to de deny the triple kill, but at this point I still think Vayne is a little bit ridiculous. Her stats at this point, 11 kills, two deaths. Ooh boy, not a position you want to find yourself in, I must say. Vayne is kind of ridiculous at this point, and Lee Sin hasn't died once, he's been doing a whole sort of playmaking, and I think this might even be an early surrender, guys. Calling coming off, forcing the minions back, but even with a Janna shield, these people are gonna go crazy. The charm, oof, doing a bunch of damage. Just the charm itself. The long trying to actually go in for it, try to get someone. Everybody's sort of engaging. Listen, actually going straight up, doing, getting the kickoff. 
Not quite managing to kill the John with a charm goes off. Only is it gonna be enough? Actually gonna go through the Elise, kill the John, and then gets herself a double kill with that. Ooh boy, that's insane this game. Now Ari gonna go in as all the action. He's gonna catch the Lissandra in the bubble. She's gonna tomb herself just to try to survive. Ari gonna go in instantly and get the true damage off on her to kill her. At this point, the game is pretty much look at that. Finding another tower, not even caring. Kills on all sides. Some people even disconnect, whether it's rage quitting or something else, I don't know. LeBlanc does get a double kill in response, but dies to Nami, actually. And, uh, actually, yeah, red team does surrender at this point. Gold disadvantage is at 15k. And once the opposite team can just kill your entire team under your own tower, you just can't really do much anything to stop. And at this tier of play, nobody's gonna let a game like this go. Nobody's gonna allow you to come back. Even if it's solo queue, it's still Challenger, so it's not that easy. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the game. Leave me a like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you did. I'm going to include a link here on the screen to another commentary that I did of a Korean game, so I'm going to keep that up. If you guys like Korean commentary games, if you like North American commentary games, just tell me what you guys like, how you like it. Tell me and I'll cook it all up for you. <laughs> but for now, GG ranching out. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Barrage this bot lane in order to try to force this fortune.